This is Calm AF, a podcast for humans who are hard on themselves. A podcast for the overthinkers, people pleasers, perfectionists, and overachievers. I'm Kristen Finch, and I'm going to teach you how to quiet that incessant negative chatter in your head. Because you know what a person with a calm mind can do? Anything they want. Grab your coffee, gorgeous soul, because today's the day you get calm AF. Hello, gorgeous soul. Welcome to Calm AF. We are on episode 298, my friends. And today I'm going to talk to you about how your chronically dysregulated nervous system is fucking up your life. (laughs) Now, this isn't what I decided to name the episode for many, many reasons. Some people don't like that word, some people think it's just offensive. I happen to think that words are just words and we decide what we want to think about them, whatever. Like, that's just my thing. Um, But I also believe that, like, sometimes it's just the perfect word. I don't feel like I overuse it. I definitely just, when it's the word that fits, I use it just like I do with every other word. But when I think about all of us walking around with dysregulated nervous systems, what my true thought about it is that it's fucking up your life. <laughs> it's not less than that. It's that that much. But we'll call it affecting your life. So um, I have been hinting a little bit that as we are moving closer to episode 300, there are going to be changes happening. And there are. I'm going to talk about it more in episode 300. But a little kind of more of an idea of what that means is, um, so I have spent 300 episodes having a conversation. I, there are thousands of people that listen to this podcast every week and it doesn't, to me, this isn't about lecturing, right? I'm not, I don't think of this podcast as a lecture where I'm like here to teach you something. It feels like I am having a conversation with you, you and me sitting here having a conversation. There happen to be a thousand of them, but it's me and you. And I love it. Like I love having this conversation with you every single week. And it feels a little unbalanced. It feels like I am spending a lot of my time and energy really thinking about like trying to assume or guess or anticipate what it is that you want to hear. And if we were in a real, like the two of us, if you were sitting here with me right now, I wouldn't just talk at you for 20 minutes and then be like, well, love you, see you later, and walk out. Like, that's not how this would go. I would be, you know, saying something and then you would ask me a question or I would pause and say, do you have, do you understand what I'm saying? Or is this creating any more questions for you? Or Do you feel like you get how to apply this to your life? Or do you, where are you going to get stuck? Like there is no, in a podcast like this, there's no opportunity for me to pause and then hear what you're saying. So it very much feels like I am talking at you and then I'm guessing about what you want to hear next. Now, of course, I have my clients that are, you know, I'm using their actual words, but there are thousands of you listening And I know you've got questions. I know you listen to an episode and you're like, that's great. And here, if we were sitting together, here's the question I would ask. Or if you came, if we were sitting in a room and I started talking about a topic that you didn't want to talk about, you would change the subject. You'd be like, let's talk about this instead. But I don't know that because I am not, there's no way in this, in this format for me to like actually sit in a room with you one at a time. But what I want to do is change that. I want it to feel more balanced of a give and take and, and making sure that I'm not guessing what you want. I am asking you what you want. So in the show notes from here on out, there is a form where you are able to send me your questions. You are able to send me, like, if something pops up during an episode, send me a qu- send it to me. Ask me. And I might do an episode on it or I might answer you. Just depends. Um, and I'm not going to be able to answer every single thing if everyone's sending every question they have clearly, but I'm going to try and really use what is it that you want, want to hear from you. And 
You can also use this form to just send me messages. Like if you love an episode or if there's an, a, a topic that I haven't talked about much, but you would love to have my take on or you want to have that conversation, I don't know unless you tell me. So now there is a form that you can submit that will let me know. So that's where we're heading with this with this podcast. Not saying that there aren't, that if I don't get questions, I'm not going to talk about anything. But um, yeah, we're it, it's shifting. That's one of the changes. Um, one of the other things that I want to let you know. So Call Me Off Life is my coaching, my small group coaching program. Um, it's a six-month program. If you want to get access to me directly. Like if you want to work with me in a small group setting um, and let me get to know you and help you, that will need to be done by July because in July, we're going to close that down for a little bit while I'm making some other changes. It's not going away, but the earliest it'll be back will be probably like late fall of 2024 or early 2025. So if you want to get in before then, um, this isn't like, oh, my God, hurry, time's running out. It's But kind of hurry, time's running out to, to join before the end of the year. Um, same thing goes with my one-on-one. I am not going to be taking new one-on-ones after July of this year. I don't have space for it. And if you're already my client, don't worry. If you've been my client and you want to kind of hop back on the schedule, please reach out. But reach out soon because after July, unless you've already talked to me, I'm thinking about someone who I just talked to, I'm not talking to you, um, but we can we can get you back on for like, you know, some some touch up sessions or whatever, but before July. OK. All right. So let's talk about how your dysregulation is fucking up your life. If you listened a couple of weeks ago, the episode that I shared lessons in the, from the hospital part two. I spent another week in the hospital with my daughter who is kind of going through this this illness, this you know, thing that keeps popping up. Um and when we got home, she's home, she's feeling much better, but when we got home, I had such like a appreciation for this nervous system retraining that I've been doing um because of how awful I felt when I got home from the hospital. The reason being, so today, on average, in general, I spend more of my time in a chronically regulated nervous system state. Most of the time, my default setting is calm AF. My default setting is my nervous system is at rest. My parasympathetic is like not reacting to to emergencies that aren't there. And while I was in the hospital, that wasn't the case. I had I was very cognizant of the fact that I was having to work harder to either stay regulated or pull myself out of dysregulation and back into regulation. Like it felt like a workout, so much so to the fact that when I got home, I remember I kept commenting like it feels like I ran a marathon or I just did like a really super hard like weights workout because my muscles hurt, my my legs hurt, like everything hurts. It feels like I worked out. And I did. I was working out something that I don't have to work out as much anymore because it's more of like autopilot now that I stay more in regulation. But it's used to spending more time in the box so that the the contrast when I wasn't spending time regulated how it was impacting my body. I was like, oh my God, like I'm so grateful that I don't feel like this all the time anymore because it it is how I used to spend all my time feeling. Now, most of you also spend most of your time feeling the effects, the impacts of a chronically dysregulated nervous system, not because there's something wrong with you, okay? There's nothing wrong with you. There's a couple things happening, right? First of all, your nervous system is actually designed to stay more hypervigilant, more in the state of dysregulation. You are to be scanning the world for danger, looking for anything that could go wrong, looking for things that are going wrong, looking for ways that you don't measure up. That is what your nervous system is actually designed to do. So 
if you are in a chronic state of dysregulation, it actually means your nervous system is doing its job. The problem is that your nervous system is a little bit hypersensitive these days. It thinks that things are dangerous that aren't actually dangerous. It thinks thinks that something going wrong or something that doesn't go the way you want it to or something that, you know, someone looked at you a certain way. It's, it's perceiving those things as emergencies and keeping you in a dysregulated state. So your nervous system is doing its job. It's just doing its job like, very emphatically, like with zhuzh, (laughs) Um, but not because there's something wrong with you. And I'm not a a special unicorn because I am in in a more regulated state, like my default setting is calm AF, not because I'm a unicorn or because I'm lucky. It's because I have literally spent years retraining my nervous system moving the dial on my calm AF scale so that it spends most of the time in that regulated state. That is not what we are taught to do. Okay, this is a, I purposefully and actively and consistently have worked on this for years. That's why. That's the only reason why. I am not special. Also, the reason why it's hard is because the world around you is 1,000% set up to trigger your sympathetic nervous system all day, every day, everywhere you look in order to sell you things, in order to, you know, keep people kind of obedient and in line. Everything is kind of chosen to instill fear, instill danger, right? Social media. And and a lot of times it feels very like, you know, safe. It feels very um, subtle, but really thinking about everything that you're looking at, are you comparing yourself, your life, whatever it is, to whatever you are engaging with? So social media, how much of the time are you looking at things thinking, my house doesn't look like that, my body doesn't look like that, my face doesn't look like that, my I don't have a car like that, I don't have a house like that, I don't have a relationship like that. We're constantly being told that what we have isn't what we're supposed to have. It's triggering your nervous system to say, hey, this is a danger. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. The news is constantly being like, oh, you better be scared all the time. Because you know who's easy to control? People who are scared, <laughs> actually. We, we, we need to be scared. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that. Um, the podcast that you're listening to, if you feel like you're constantly thinking about it's like focused on how you're not measuring up, like something that about you is wrong, you need to like change who you are in order to be worthy. This is all triggering your sympathetic nervous system. And so it makes sense, right? It makes sense that, of course, because you're naturally wired this way and the world is set up this way, that you are in a chronic state of dysregulation unless you are actively, purposefully, consistently prioritizing this retraining of your nervous system, teaching your nervous system that it's actually safe to be safe. It's actually safe to be regulated. You need to be doing it every day, at least a little bit. And if you're not, you're not, that just means you are probably chronically dysregulated and you're just used to it. You don't know how it feels. It's kind of like if you've ever, um, you know, ate junk food, you ate junk food for like all your life until you were 30. And then at 30, you started eating healthy and you're like, oh, my God, I didn't even know how bad I felt because I was just used to it. Remember, that was me when I started drinking more water (laughs) and I was just chronically dehydrated. I didn't know it. I just thought that's just how my body feels like. I'm not a thirsty person. It must have. And when I started actually like being hydrated more, I was like, oh, my gosh, like I didn't know how much it was impacting me until I I kind of experienced how it feels to be hydrated. This is what it's like. And this is when I came home from the hospital being like, oh, my, that's right. I forgot. I always felt kind of sore. I always felt kind of like everything kind of hurts a little bit. Not like I wasn't, it wasn't chronic pain, but like everything feels a little heavy. Everything feels a little hard. Everything feels, 
It was a chronic because I was used to it. I was just used to it. And so as I've come home and I'm recognizing that like the 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 physical sensations I'm having in my body um, are very likely because I spent a week, I spent more than a week, but I, I really spent a week working really hard and spending more time dysregulated than I was used to. Kind of like if I, you know, I'm hydrated and now I stop drinking water. I'm going to be very aware. Oh, right. This is how it felt. So, again, if you, you most likely, I would say 95% plus of you listening right now, unless you are working with me and doing this work daily, are in a chronic dysregulated state. You're just used to it. And you already know this, right? You know how good it feels when like you kind of slide into feeling that feeling of calm or that feeling of peace or being present. Like you know how good that feels. You have the contrast of like how it feels to not be in it. So you already know. I don't have to tell you that it feels better um, to be in a regulated state. But what I think we're good at is really disconnecting from it, disconnecting from chronic dysregulation. It's like when you are anxious, we think that that just is like it anxiety stays in this little like this little zipper pouch in your brain. Like, oh, my anxiety's here. No. Everything that is happening in your body is impacting every part of your body. Every part of your body. You your chronic stress, your chronic dysregulation isn't just sta- staying in a little zipper pouch. It's affecting your body, every single organ, every single cell, because you don't get to just hold something in one spot. It's just the way bodies work. So without going into super, super specifics with the nervous system and how it works, a lot of you, it's kind of trendy right now to know about the vagus nerve. If you don't know what the vagus nerve is, the vagus nerve is a cranial nerve. It runs from your brain And it goes all through your body. It's sending information back and forth between your body and your brain. And it truly, it's it's this very long, wandery nerve. And it connects with every organ in your body. And the vagus nerve is really responsible. It's like the parasympathetic. It's responsible for things like digestion, heart rate, and, and things like breathing and swallowing. And because it's parasympathetic, it's also like, the leader. It's like the head honcho of the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic is that calm AF nervous system. It's the the all is well, the resting and digesting instead of fight or flight. And the vagus nerve is supposed to tell your body when the danger has passed that it's safe to slow down. It's like, okay, everybody can calm down. The danger is past. The breathing, breathing, you can slow down. Respiration system, go ahead and slow down. Digestion, you can start digesting again. It basically tells your body, your, your the brain, the nerve, the nerve sends signals to your organs that you can go ahead and function efficiently, function as normal now. We don't need to like change because there's danger. The problem like I said earlier, is everything feels like a danger from people giving you, you know, a a dirty look, saying something in a tone, like all of that is activating your sympathetic nervous system so much so that the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic nervous system is like, I better just stay quiet here. It seems to me that this person is in a constant state of an emergency. There is always some danger. I better not activate very often, right? This is why more of your time is spent dysregulated and less of your time is spent regulated. Your default setting is more dysregulation. So that's what's happening. And the good news, the best news of all, is that you can retrain it. You can retrain it. That's what this podcast is for. That's what Calm AF Life is for. That's what I teach my clients to do is to retrain your nervous system so that you can move out of chronic dysregulation. But you have to do it every day. It can't just be like, oh, I listen to the podcast and I know it, but I'm not actually practicing it. That's not how it works. This is not 
how you can retrain your nervous system. It's never going to happen on accident. It's never going to happen if you sporadically retrain it, right? If you, it's like if you want to really work on your, you know, gain muscle and you decide you're going to lift weights once a month, you're going to think about it maybe once a week, you're going to think about it, you're not going to do it, or you're going to do it once a couple days and then you're going to stop. Like you're not actually going to build muscle in your body doing it that way. This is the same thing with training your nervous system. So that's what we're doing in this podcast. We're talking about it. But today what I want to share with you is some of the ways that a chronically dysregulated nervous system manifests physically, aka how it's fucking up your life, (laughs) how it's impacting your physical body. It's not staying locked in the zipper pouch. Here's what's happening. Let's let's just talk about physical. Next week, next episode, I'm going to go into the other implications, the, the toll that It's taking on your emotional wellness, your social, your psychological, your relationships, all of that. But today we're going to we're going to talk about the physical. So these are some red flags that your chronically disnervous, your chronically dysregulated nervous system is messing with your body. Digestive issues. Okay, this is a big red flag because that vagus nerve, that gut brain connection is real. If that that vagus nerve is constantly saying there's an emergency, there's an emergency, your digestion is not a priority. If you deal with pretty frequent painful or, you know, uncomfortable digestive issues, things like bloating, nausea, constipation, just general, like I can't eat anything or it affects my whole, you know, I can't eat anything and or I feel sick. I'm not saying that your your nervous system is the cause, but I am saying it's a major player. It's a major player. And it's probably the thing that if you if you tr- work on will make a really big impact, right? Because if your body thinks it's in a state of constant emergency, it's not going to be prioritizing digestion. Digestion is something that we do when we rest, right? Rest and digest. Parasympathetic nervous system is rest and digest. If that parasympathetic nervous system is hardly ever visited, hardly ever activated, well, then you don't have the rest and digest, right? It's absolutely going to impact your digestive system. Another way it shows up, inflammation. What do we know about inflammation? Your body, when the vagus nerve, this parasympathetic nervous system, when it's stimulated, when it knows that it's safe, when the danger of the emergency is over, it will release these natural anti-inflammatories, right? The, 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 the hormones that are released when you are in an emergency are trying to upregulate, right? They're, they're like the fight hormones. What happens when the danger is passed is your body's like, okay, that's done. Now let's go ahead and heal. Let's go ahead and, and, and kind of like pour some water on the flames. Let's get rid of this inflammation. Right. But if that if that vagus nerve, if the parasympathetic nerve is never activated, that's not happening. We're not getting those natural anti-inflammatories. So the inflammation gets flamier, <laughs> gets angrier, gets stronger. That's another way. Poor sleep. Of course, you're not going to sleep well when your body thinks you're in danger. Think about it. If you were out in the woods, you were actually in real danger, like you're you're going to be attacked and you know it's it's true real emergency you are in that situation would you be like you know i'm pretty pooped i think i'll take a nap no it's not safe to fall asleep so you're either going to keep one eye open stay awake or you're going to sleep really lightly you're not going to go into any of those deeper levels those that rem sleep that core sleep that deep sleep you're not going to get into those phases of sleep if your body's like don't stop paying attention Right? Of course, your sleep is going to be impacted. And can we just all agree that everything is harder when you're tired? Everything. Everything is harder. Staying regulated is harder. Doing, running errands is harder. Thinking is harder. All of it's harder. Um, hormone imbalance. I already talked about the hormones, right? What happens when, the, when your body recognizes some sort of danger? There's hormones released, things like cortisol and adrenaline. And these 
hormones aren't meant to just constantly be invading your body. They're meant to be like used in the case of emergencies, quickly shot into the body to activate that sympathetic nervous system. And then when the danger is passed, the parasympathetic nervous system is meant to like stop them and to release the hormones that kind of go, you know, kind of are the feel good hormones. Same, very similar with inflammation. But if you are in a chronic dysregulated state, the parasympathetic nervous system is the vagus nerve is never getting to put on the brakes. It's always like that the the hormones that are getting released are those those ones like cortisol and adrenaline that are activating everything instead of letting us rest and digest. So you get that hormone disruption, you get hormone imbalance. Are you seeing any of these things in your own self? <laughs> And also, just in general, a weaker immune system. You get sick more. Your body can't fight things as much, right? And the reason why, again, so let's say you are in an actual dangerous, dangerous emergency situation and you, like, have a cold, right? You aren't going to be prioritizing resting and sleeping and taking care of your cold you're going to be hypervigilantly making sure you're safe. Your body is doing the same thing. Okay, your body, when it is in a chronic state of dysregulation, viruses or bugs or germs or whatever that can affect your immune system are like, that's fine, but we don't, that's not the priority here. The priority is not to get over this cold, get over this virus. It's going to make sure that your blood is flowing to your heart and your legs so you can fight the danger, so you can run away. It's not worried about your cold. It's going to deal with that later, except that like when does later come? When does your body have enough chance to heal or to digest or to calm down or to sleep if you're most of the time in that hypervigilant state of dysregulation? When is your body supposed to do all of that? It can't. It's not safe to. So it doesn't. And this is how. These are just five reasons. There's a gazillion other ways that it's physically manifesting. But those are like some of the big obvious ways that this is fucking up your life. Okay. Now, I don't want to leave you on like, oh, my God, I'm fucking up. Here's what you need to know about it. You just need to know. Take away this that your nervous system is doing what it's supposed to do. It's just a little overzealous. And so all that needs to happen, you don't need to change who you are. You just need to practice retraining your nervous system, spending more time on purpose, more time with accountability, practicing how your body feels when it's regulated so that it becomes familiar, so that your body starts recognizing like it's safe to be safe. It's safe to be regulated. It's okay. We can stay here more. That it just, it takes practice. It takes consistency. It takes time. And you can't just kind of hope that it happens on accident. You really, really have to prioritize retraining your nervous system in order to get yourself out of that chronic dysregulation so that it stops fucking up your life. Next week, we're going to talk about the ways it can like mentally and emotionally and psychologically and socially fuck up your life and your relationships, and all of those things. (laughs) But it's all good. This is for information so you can know, like, oh, maybe it's not just staying in this pocket, in this this zippered pouch in my brain. Maybe, Maybe it's time to prioritize retraining my nervous system. Hint, hint. It is. It is time right now. Right now is the perfect time. All right. So if you want my help with it, obviously call me off life. Um, if you don't do call me off life, please just figure out a way to do something. Not, not on, on your own. This isn't something that happens on your own because your nervous system dysregulation is always going to be louder and it's your autopilot. So make sure that you have the, the accountability and the support system to do this and the know-how. All right. I love you. I love you. I will see you next week. Thanks for listening. And before you go, one more thing. So as you know, I am slightly obsessed with helping as many humans 
tap into their calm AF-ness as possible. So if this podcast has helped you, would you please leave a review, make sure you're subscribed, and share it with your friends. Also, make sure you head on over to kristenfinch.com to see how you can work with me. You can sign up for my emails and get any other goodies I have available. Until next week, I love you so much. I am so grateful that you're here. I'll see you next time.